Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to show how to enable multi-factor authentication in Azure AD. Azure Active Directory multi-factor authentication provides another layer of security by using a second form of authentication. During the MFA process, a user is prompted for additional forms of identification during a sign-in event. You can enable MFA with conditional access policies. These policies allow you to prompt users for MFA when needed for security and stay out of user's way when not needed. Before I start setting up the policy, first I want to go over the prerequisites, then talk about how you can plan the deployment depending on the three scenarios that you may have in your tenant. After that, I'm going to go over available methods that you can choose for MFA. And finally, I'm going to start setting up the MFA in my tenant. So for prerequisites, you need to make sure you have a working Azure AD tenant with Azure AD Premium P1 license. And after that, you need to have a user with conditional access administrator account or security administrator, or you can have global admin. So you need to have one of these th three type users with this permission level to set up the MFA. For the planned deployment, before you begin your deployment, make sure you meet the following prerequisite for your relevant scenarios. So you may have one of these three scenarios. You may have cloud only identity environment with modern authentication. So in this case, you, do, you don't have any prerequisite tasks. You can have hybrid identity. In this scenario, you need to deploy Azure ED Connect and synchronize users identities between the on premises active directory domain services or ADDS and Azure AD. And finally, you may have on premises legacy applications published for cloud access. In this scenario, you need to deploy Azure AD application proxy. There are many methods that can be used for a second factor authentication. As a matter of fact, Microsoft recommends to enable more than one MFA method so that users have a backup in case their primary method is unavailable. It's totally up to you. In this video, I'm going to only enable one MFA method, but if you want to know what are the other options, here are the options that you have. Windows Hello for Business, Microsoft Authenticator app, Fast Identity Online 2, Auth Hardware Tokens, Auth Software Tokens, SMS Verification, and finally Voice Call Verification. Now it's time to enable the policy, and I'm going to show you how you can do it. I logged into Azure Active Directory Admin Center. But before I start creating the policy, first I will create a security group and add a test user to it because I want to try this policy on a user that is not an admin. I recommend everyone do the same thing, testing the policy on a test account, not yours if you are a global admin, because you don't want to lock yourself out. So if I click on groups, you can see I create a security group called non-admin. We can name it anything. And then here I added one user and this is my test user. Now I'm going to click on Azure Active Directory here and under manage, I'm going to select security. Under manage again, I'm going to select multi-factor authentication and under configure, I'm going to select additional cloud-based multi-factor authentication settings. Here on this page, we have a few options that we can modify or edit. First one called app password. I'm not going to do anything for this settings. I'm going to move on to trusted IPs. The trusted IPs feature of Azure AD bypasses MFA prompts for user who sign in from a designated IP address range. You can set trusted IP range for your on-premises environment and there is no Azure AD MFA prompt when users are one of these locations. For this, you need Azure AD Premium P1 Edition. There is also another policy that you can use for trusted IPs. It's called name location. From there, you can set up both IPv6 and IPv4, and I will show you where to find the setting. Next, we have verification options. Again, 
for this i'm not going to do anything or touch any of the settings here and i'm going to move on to remember multi factor authentication on trusted device this feature lets user bypass verifications for a specific number of days after successfully signing into a device using mfa the default is set to 90 but you can set anything between 1 to 365 days one important note if an account or device is compromised remembering mfa for trusted devices can affect security if a trusted device is lost or stolen you should revoke mfa sessions for this example i'm not going to set up anything from this page and i'm going to go back to security this time i'm going to click on authentication methods in the beginning of the video i mentioned there are a few authentication methods that you can use for your mfa and they're all listed here by default they're all going to be not enabled and that's what it is right now and for this example i'm going to use microsoft authenticator so i'm going to click on it under enabled and target i'm going to toggle this and make make this enable then we have two options we have include and exclude if it's if you select include target you have all users or you can select groups and for me it's going to going to be select groups and i have added my security group that i have my test user in it so if you want to add more groups you can click on add groups and select any of the secure groups that you have and you can add that group here the registration is going to be optional and authentication mode we have three options we have any passwordless and push if you select passwordless after entering the username instead of seeing a prompt for password the user sees a number from the app and if the correct number is selected the signing process is complete so that's what passwordless does if you select push, or I think it's called push notification through the app, the app will send a push notification. Then the user can select verify or deny. So that option is also available. If you're not sure which option you should go or which mode you should select, you can put it on any and you can click save. Authentication method is enabled. And if I go back, there's also exclude option. So let's say you have a group of people or a department that you want to exclude from this uh, method you can add that group here i mentioned there is another policy for trusted ips so if you go on conditional access and select named locations there's option called ip ranges location if you click on it here you can give it a name to your policy you can check this box and select mark as trusted location then you can add your ipv4 ip v6 ranges here and that's another way of creating trusted ip to create my policy i'm going to select azure ad conditional access then i'm going to select new policy i'm going to call this mfa under assignments i'm going to select this option here and we have the same thing we have include and exclude and we have none all user or select user and groups and i'm going to select this option the last option and then I'm going to select user and groups. I'm going to find my security group that I have here. It's called non-admin. I'm going to select this. And then I'm going to move to the next option called cloud apps or actions. Again, we have include and exclude. Every time you create a new policy, for the most part, you're going to get asked for include and exclude. I'm going to select include and I'm going to select all cloud apps. If you're setting up this policy, it's totally up to you if you want to do all cloud apps or you can select certain apps but i'm gonna select all i'm gonna skip conditions and i'm gonna go to access controls and under grant i'm gonna select this option here i'm gonna keep this grant access and i'm gonna select require multi-factor authentication here i'm gonna say select i'm not gonna do anything with session at the bottom we have two options i can do report only or i can do on in this case i'm gonna do on and click on create so my policy is created, I called it MFA and the state is on. Now I'm gonna test and see what's gonna happen if my user wanted to log in to office.com. So MFA is enabled in my tenant and now I'm going to log in with my test account and I should go through the process of enrolling the MFA for the first time. So I'm gonna click on sign in here.
So this is what your user will see for the first time. More information required. And I'm going to click on Next. Now on this page, it says Microsoft Authenticator. That's what I set up for my tenant. And I have two options here. I can say I want to use different Authenticator app. Or I can say just Next. Or I can say also I want to set up different methods. So, but here I'm going to say next. And here it shows you how you can add to your authenticator app. So I'm going to say next again. So I scan the QR code from my uh, authenticator app. And then I'm clicking next here. On my app, on my cell phone, I'm getting this pop-up saying like approve sign in. And then uh, it says tech techtrip.org and I see my username here and I have two options approve or deny I can say approve here notification approve I'm gonna click next and you can you can see here that Microsoft Authenticator app was successfully registered and here's the date and time and everything and you can see the default signing method is Microsoft Authenticator I'm gonna click done I'm gonna say no to this and I just logged into office.com. So as you notice, that was very easy and the process didn't take that long. You may want to create a guide or a, a KB and send it to your users if they want to do it for the first time. I'm going to sign out from here. I'm going to try one more time. I'm going to click sign in. So right now, my setting is on the push notification. So on my cell phone, I'm getting this pop-up saying, saying approve, sign in, approve and deny. If I click approve, then my user can get into office.com. So that's what it is right now. And it will, I will get asked every time I sign out and sign in. So that's how I set up in my tenant. It's sort of up to you how you want to set up. You can use the trusted IP range or you can also use or you can use remember MFA on trusted devices so those options are available I'm going to sign out from this account and that's how you can create MFA in Office 365 in Azure AD let me know if you have any questions see you all next time